up everybody Sven Diesel here we're gonna be tying up the easy jelly bean zonker now the jelly bean zonker to my knowledge is a pattern that Holger uh, Lockman came out of uh, came up with he's out of Germany and he ties a killer version of this um, and so we're gonna go ahead and attempt it this is a A-Rex hook a TP610 this is a size 2 aught. I'll tie these in one aught um, twos fours I've got some uh, nano silk here this is a 12 aught nano silk and I'll just go ahead and start some thread down the shank of this hook um, this is going to be covered up and you don't need to worry about uh, you know touching wraps or anything if anything um, spacing out your wraps provides a little bit of grip right there and we're going to put some super glue on this later anyway so first step is I take some of this 30 pound mono because with all of my zonkers I like to prevent fouling and this will also come in key later so I'm just going to tie this in trying to keep it a little bit on the uh, the side right here so that it comes on the underside right there at the bend of the hook and I've been chewing on this piece because I've been tying up a bunch of these and it also helps hold it in a little trick of the trade I'm joking but um, just go ahead and tie this in uh, tie it into the bend right there so it dips down a little bit and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using some magnum uh, uh, rabbit uh, strips for this you can use a regular strip as well just when I'm in the two aught and one aught I tend to use the magnum when I tie like twos fours and sixes I just use the regular rabbit strip now I just measure it out so it's about double the length of the overall hook length and then I space it out so I got about a quarter of an inch that hangs over the eye. I'll go ahead and part this right here to the best of my ability. And then I'll pinch it so that that uh, magnum um, strip kind of wraps around each side of the shank of the hook. Um, it will be a little bit easier if you're just using a regular uh, rabbit strip because it will more sit on top, especially with this heavier gauge uh, uh, hook. But just do about three or four really tight wraps, nice and secure, and then I just kind of um, do uh, hold this up, and I'll do a couple wraps in front of it to kind of separate that hide from the shank, kind of lift it up a little bit. Now, here's my trick for preventing fouling. Um, I go about halfway or a third of the way down the tail, and I'll take my bodkin and I'll just puncture a hole. And you don't you want to kind of ream it out a little bit. You don't have to make it bigger than necessary, but uh, it makes it easier if you ream it out a little bit so that we can get this uh, mono through there and I just shove it up through and then keep track of it lock my vise back in and then bring it down and I'll bring it to the other side of the shank of the hook and I'll just tie it in with about five to six uh, wraps at this point and that uh, mono is going to be in our way but you, you got to keep it on there because we're going to be utilizing it for the next step a little later on this fly so I pull it tight so that it's not stretching that rabbit hide towards the bend, but you know it's not loose, and that way it just holds that zonker strip back, restricts very little movement, still allows some flow, and then I'll advance my thread up to about the halfway between where our rabbit hide is and the eye of the hook. And now what I want to do is I'm just grabbing some tungsten beads, and you can use one tungsten bead, you can use... A bunch of tungsten beads but I just have some uh, I think these are 532nd tungsten beads and these will show through and so for some of these patterns you can mix and match your colors but with the white I really love using like a pink or a red bead uh, sometimes I'll do three um, but I found it just best to use two that way we're not um, limiting this hook gap here and I just shove them on um, I try to have the one so it's concaving you know the one way and the other so that it helps with the taper a little bit but then I'll just advance my thread up in front of that uh, those two tungsten beads securing that mono in place and then I want about I don't know an eighth of an inch here between the first bead and the uh, the hook that way it doesn't uh, we're not going to be crowding the eye later in the process and we'll snip off the remaining mono uh, we don't have to double it back over itself this is going to be um, secured via some other way that we'll get into and that's why it's called the easy jelly bean zonker so just do a bunch of wraps to make sure that those tungsten beads are in place you want to just uh, do you know work your way back and forth and uh, go in between the beads they don't have to be touching they can be if you want you can see how you could add a third or even a fourth bead on here and um, it, you know it's personal preference the advantage to this pattern is the color combinations are endless you can mix and match your rabbit hide but um, here's the trick we're gonna work our way back to where our tie-in point of that hide is 
and then make sure those beads are centered underneath the shank of the hook and then I'm just going to use a little bit of this uh, Gorilla Glue this is just a, uh, a regular super glue it's not the gel I want it to set somewhat fast and I'll just go ahead and brush those beads so that those do not move uh, I want them to stay where they're at and also this is securing the mono but that isn't really for strength um, it's more just to make sure those beads don't shift to the side and cause it to ride a little funny now it's called the easy um, jelly bean because we're using this easy body tubing um, this comes in a lot of different colors but just cut off a piece that's roughly the length from the the hide past the eye um, and then I'm just gonna slide it back over and then you see there's a cord I'm gonna make sure that's on top and then I'm gonna just do a loose wrap with you know trying to trap as much as that material being careful not to fray it and then I do those two loose wraps and then I'm gonna really kinda of crank down and really secure that in now and it's gonna just stay right there in place and then we're gonna whip finish that with just a three turn whip finish make sure you're using a bigger whip finish tool or if you've got the skills to do it with your hand do that but you can see how I just walk that um, you know adjusting my my left hand to come closer to the body to give my my um, opening a little bit larger so I can go around that tubing and we'll cut our thread out at this point now we cut this tubing a little longer and that's perfectly fine what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim it just past the eye of the hook and you gotta be careful at this point because it's gonna want to separate on you and so don't tr manipulate it too much and you can see I got a little too much there I'm gonna trim off a little bit more and there it actually frayed a little bit and that's okay you can burn these ends if you want but we're gonna go ahead and just pull it back with our left hand and then start our thread right there behind the eye get yourself about 10 to 12 really good wraps there and then uh, we'll trim out that uh, tag end and then here is the critical key part see how those ends are starting to fray just work your way through that do a nice loose wrap and then pull the tubing back don't try to use your thread to shove it back on use your left hand to pull that tubing back and then get a really nice head there so you can see we just formed the body that jelly bean zonker using this tubing and then I'll just pull the zonker strip up and over I don't cut mine right now I've got about an, a sixteenth of an inch there of thread and I'm gonna utilize that whole thing so we're gonna cover it with the eyes anyway and that way we're not cutting it and ruining the the bulk on the head um, we're going to just do about three wraps come in here check it out looks pretty good at this point and then just cut it as close as you can without losing that zonker strip through um, your thread wraps you just did you could even do a, a, a half hitch or something to secure it in place but I've never had mine come out um, so now we just need to really just bind that zonker strip down so just try to do some figure eights and crisscrosses over that hide just to get it down and secure and this is all going to be covered by eyes so you're not going to see it per se unless you're looking right at it the fish won't care but just make sure you don't have any straggle fibers which will make it a little bit more difficult when applying our eyes and then we'll go ahead and do a, a whip finish now and that is the bulk of our fly is done you know with the tying now we're going to get into more arts and crafts using resin and, and other such uh, tools to to form this body so first off I want to limit the hook gap and so that mylar tubing you can see right now is kind of bowing down and so I'm just going to use some of this uh, I've got some Semperfly this is their no tack UV I really like this stuff and I'm just going to lift that strip up and just put a nice line of resin right there on the top where that cord was and then just kind of push that hide into it and then with my other hand before I cure it I'm going to push that to form the shape that I want like I said you can manipulate this however you want but we'll go ahead and cure that I like how it is right now and you can see we just took about a, a sixteenth of an inch away from our hook gap so that it's going to be better for hookups and now comes the fun part where I'm just going to put a little bit I want to see if I can manipulate this one a little bit more so I'm just going to put a little line right here on the bottom and then we're going to do the same process without touching the bottom because that's where the resin is we're just going to push on the sides to kind of really get a nice belly there and also thin out the profile a little bit more and then we'll cure it up and it's just going to stay so we're going to be going over this again uh, with some more resin but let's go ahead and grab some eyes these are just some uh, um, I don't know rainbow eyes uh, I can't remember what they're called but um, you can use any eyes you want you can go bigger you can go smaller 
but these are about 3 16 of an inch I believe and I'll just go ahead and fit it in place right here and they're sticky and so they'll hold for a minute um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and resin over this so just make sure they're about in the position you want you don't want to play with them too much you can also put some resin down first and then cure it but I'm gonna start applying this resin right here between the two eyes and I'll just put a nice little layer down right here and then I'll work my way over the eye trying not to touch it as much as possible and then we'll just put a little bit fill that gap and I'm getting a little too much resin here these are gonna be slippery so we're just gonna fast forward through this a little bit but you know it takes a little bit of time a little bit of practice to to get those eyes in place and form this head the way you want it and that's totally okay but you will cure that up now and then our eyes are secure at this point and we are going to go and move forward with uh, forming the rest of this body and so I'm just going to take the resin and just start by trying not to trap any of that hair down and you can pull it at this point because we don't have resin anywhere else that's uncured and just right there along the hide let that soak in but don't leave it upside down too long or it will kind of shift down if you put too much and go into the hair and then I'm just going to cover up all this uh, this uh, tubing here work my way around to the other side and I'm just barely squeezing as I work it around with the the, the tip of this that I've added onto the, the, the resin bottle and I'm just going to blend it in get it uh, into the eyes as well making sure that we just got nice even coat all around that it's nice and smooth you don't it if you put too much it's going to drip on you and cause imperfections in the body which could affect how it swims but um, you know that's why we put those tungsten beads along with this hook uh, it should keel perfectly and then we'll go ahead and cure that up make sure you give plenty of cure time we've used a lot of resin and the other reason why I put those tungsten beads in there is we've basically in a way created an air bubble right here um, with the mylar tubing um, that I believe it's 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 mylar but they just call it easy body and so there's a lot of different um, tubings you can use for this uh, minnow body I think is another name um, I just found that this pearl just is really effective and I love the colors that it, it puts off especially with this white this has been an extremely effective pattern for me at one of my uh, local lakes and you can see I kind of got a little bit of a bump on that one side and so I'm just going to work this around the reason I do two coatings is the first coat I feel kind of absorbs in to those gaps whereas the second coat just makes it rock solid and so I'm just going to inspect it because once you cure it it is there so if you have a big bubble or a drip that will be the end product and you know the fish are going to notice now you can see I've done what three layers of resin on here the Semperfly stuff does really well and I um, want a little bit more right there between the eyes I know that um, Holger actually segments the eyes from the body um, he does a phenomenal job he also does it a little bit different he he makes the the body out of the resin first and then puts the zonker strip on but I just found this um, easy body material or mylar tubing or minnow body uh, just reflects so many properties and then I don't have to glitter it and you know do all that I just you know use the mylar tubing to my benefit so that's pretty much it um, just make sure you you cure it up really really good um, maybe set it in the Sun for a bit when you're done um, I've given it about 15 20 seconds here this is rock solid it's a no tack UV so it's gonna hold its luster and you can see the last step here is I'm gonna trim this tail to a point because I use the the magnum strip that way it's a, a little bit more of a taper at the end and um, just make sure you you cut the hide and not you know don't cut the hairs because you want that to go into a nice taper and so you can cut that a little shorter I like a little bit longer tail and I can change it on the water but you can see how that mono loop restricts it and um, there you go you can tie it up in a bunch of different colors and uh, it fishes really well so good luck and